the new chapter in mechanics. The name of the chapter is centroid and center of gravity. Here we have the first part as centroid and the second part of the chapter is center of gravity. First, let us understand what is centroid. Here I will be writing the definition of centroid. Centroid, it is a single point about which entire area is acting for a lamina or plane figure irrespective of the position of the plane figure. So here I have written the definition of centroid. By centroid we mean that it is a single point about which entire area is acting for a lamina or plane figure irrespective of the position of plane figure. So from the definition it is understood that centroid is applicable only for plane figures and when I talk about plane figures, plane figures means only 2D figures, no 3D figures would be here. So here I can see that it is applicable to plane figures having area but no volume. So here I have clearly defined what is centroid. When you talk about centroid, it means you are talking about a figure which has area but which has no volume. So by no volume it is clear that it is not a solid but a 2D figure. Examples, some of the 2D figures are rectangle, square, circle, semicircle, triangle, quarter circle. etc. So here I have given some of the examples of plane figures. It means whenever we will calculate the centroid, we will be calculating the centroid only for these figures. Or if it is possible, you can combine, like for example, you can combine rectangle and semicircle. Then it becomes a composite figure that is called as a composite figure. Composite figure is that figure in which you are having more than one plane figure. So if you have two plane figures, it becomes a composite plane figure and it you, you can even go on increasing the number of plane figures. Minimum two are required. So from this here it is very much clear about the centroid, the definition part that it was it was a single point about which the entire area is acting for a lamina or plane figure irrespective of the position. Irrespective of the position means even if you go on changing the orientation like for example if there is a triangle we are having the apex at the top even if the apex is at the bottom then at that time also the centroid will not change it is a point which remains constant now let me draw a diagram which will indicate which will explain you the concept of centroid let me consider a plane figure which is of any general shape now this figure which I have, it consists of small small areas. 
here there will be area 1 for example area 2 area 3 and so on so this figure is made up of small small areas here i have denoted them and like this you have number of areas which are acting over this plane figure now these small small areas will give us the total area which is denoted by capital a now instead of having individual areas if i want to denote the total area at that single point that single point would be called as the centroid so here if i draw this figure again instead of showing individual areas i would be showing the total area by one particular point and that point becomes centroid centroid is denoted by letter g and the location of the centroid with respect to y axis it is x bar and the location of centroid with respect to y axis with respect to y it was x bar with respect to x axis the distance of the centroid is y bar So in other words, here we have a single point which is denoting the entire area instead of showing area on individual points, we can show area on one single point and that single point is nothing but the centroid. So here the letter G which I have written this indicates the centroid. So it is very much clear from this concept of centroid that if we want to locate the centroid it would be located by finding the values of x bar and y bar. x bar y bar are the coordinates which give us the centroid and in this chapter we will just locate the centroid. So with this I think the definition part and the concept it might be understood to you all.